Centuries of Oppression, The Road to 1918. Chapter 19. Was the 1918 Act a reward for returning heroes? Well, was the 1918 Act passed as a reward for the returning heroes? Essentially, yes. Although the heroes were not yet returning, the conditions they would meet when they did eventually return was clearly in the minds of Parliament. This can be confirmed by reading the Hansard record of the debates on the bill. There is ample evidence that fair play to the men who would soon return from the trenches was the major motivation. During the debates in Parliament on the representation of the People Bill during 1917, there was virtual cross-party unanimity on the need to extend the franchise to all men over 21. The Home Secretary, George Cave, Conservative, introduced the bill as follows. War by all classes of our countrymen has brought us nearer together, has opened men's eyes and removed misunderstandings on all sides. It has made it, I think, impossible that ever again, at all events in the lifetime of the present generation, there should be a revival of the old class feeling which was responsible for so much and, among other things, for the exclusion for a period of so many of our population from the class of electors. I think I need say no more to justify this extension of the franchise. So there we have it. The principal purpose for the 1918 Act was the need to dissolve the previous class-based franchise and the specific motivation was the recognition that if they are fit to fight, they are fit to vote. This is an actual quote from the Hansard record uttered by William Thorne, member for West Ham South. The primary motivation for the 1918 Act was men. The former opposition to the enfranchisement of working class men had evaporated as a result of the war. The debt owed to the soldiers and sailors is readily appreciated. But once the vote is given to these men, the entire class basis of the franchise collapses. That the extension of the franchise could not be confined merely to ex-servicemen was argued forcibly by the Prime Minister Lloyd George. A few extracts of his speech from the Hansard record suffice to drive the point home. If you were to create a new, or what I may call a military or naval franchise, that is, that a special right to vote be granted to those gallant men who are serving their country on sea and land in all parts of the world, you would have to give a voice to all the other men. Take the munition workers. They have left their homes at the invitation of the state in large numbers. They have severed their old family ties and their old residential ties and have gone into places hitherto unknown to them and crowded there in enormous numbers. And I do not hesitate to say that after the appeals addressed to them on behalf of the government and the state, they are rendering equally important and effective service in the conduct of the war as as our soldiers and sailors. And again, my honourable and learned friend mentioned the sailors and the minesweepers. Their perils are great and incalculable. Of course, they have the same claim as even our gallant soldiers, whether they are sailors of the mercantile marine or sailors in the navy. But that is not the end of it. Come to our miners and our munition workers. What is the position here? They are not in the mines instead of being in the trenches of their own choice, a very considerable number of them. What happened? When you had voluntary recruiting in this country, because the mines had been depleted and because the great engineering works had been depleted, we had practically to warn the recruiting officers on these places and we had to make an appeal to them not to recruit, otherwise hundreds of thousands of them would have gone to the front. As a matter of fact, hundreds of thousands were going. It was becoming a serious matter. The first thing I had to do as Minister of Munitions was to appeal to Lord Kitchener to use all his power to get men back who had already gone. 
Otherwise, our engineering works would have been crippled. How unfair to say to them, if you had only volunteered, if you had only fought, it is true you are rendering greater services where you are and that you remained where you are at the request of your country because you are serving your country better there, but we cannot recognise that. Therefore, we refuse you the vote. That is absolutely indefensible. And here is Lloyd George again, expressing clearly how different the world was going to be after the war and how it was no longer right to exclude those men who would be forging this new world. We were confronted with the fact that we had a stale register. It is the war that has put us in this position. It is common ground that by some means or other you must bring that register up to date. The whole point is, what is that register going to be? We attempted, first of all, to deal with it on the basis of merely a registration bill. Every effort was made to eliminate anything in the nature of a franchise proposal. Why? Because we were afraid of provoking controversy. We found it impossible. The moment it was introduced on the floor of the House, both parties started condemning our proposal on the ground that you were excluding men who had an absolute right to pronounce upon the kind of settlement you are going to make in England after the war. There are two reasons why you cannot merely have a renewal of the old register. The first is this. The war has forced us to confront questions. The war has compelled us to decide questions practically in a single parliament after the determination of the war in which in the ordinary course might have taken a generation to settle. There is no doubt that the parliament that is elected after peace is the parliament which will have to settle questions which will practically determine the course of things, not merely in Great Britain and in the British Empire, but very largely throughout the world for generations to come. The trade of this country, the industries of this country, the relations of capital and labour in this country, the relations, and this is very important in reference to one of the recommendations of Mr Speaker's conference, of one class of labour to another class of labour, questions of the conditions of life in this country, the health of the people, the housing of the people, the education of the people, the relations of this country to the whole empire and the relations of the empire to the rest of the world. These are gigantic problems which will have to be settled by the Parliament which is elected on this register. You cannot have the old register. Why? Because by taking the old register you would be excluding the men that had made the new Britain possible. Those were the words of Lloyd George. I trust it's clear now. The primary purpose of the 1918 Act was to enfranchise working class men. And this came about as a direct consequence of the war.